All right, so what is up guys? In this video, we'll be going over the preferences data store and that's going to be replacing shared preferences very shortly. So it's very good that we get into this as soon as possible and there are many benefits in using it, but uh, let's just get started with the sample app. So as you can see here, we have an XML layout, which allows us to enter a name and age and to specify whether we are male or female. And let's just get started by adding a name, which will be Federico. And we're gonna add the age of 44. Then we're gonna close this box and set it to male. And as soon as we click on save user, it will update all of the information. And this information will persist even if we close the app. And just to demonstrate that, I'm going to close the app and find this app again, data store. And as soon as we open it, my name will be there. And we can also update this so we can change it to Mario and we can change it to age of 22. And then let's change it to male again, and it will change the information accordingly. And with that being said, right before we jump into the project, I just want to show you a few of the benefits that we have when we are using data store. And as you can see, the first benefit we have is that it is safe to call on the UI thread because the work is move to dispatches.io under the hood. And another difference is that it can signal errors. It is safe from runtime exceptions and it has a transactional API with strong consistency guarantees. And that is pretty great. And finally, it also handles data migration. So there are plenty of reasons to use Preferences Data Store, but uh, let's just jump right into the project. So as always, you'd want to go ahead and create a project. I'm using API level 23 for this one. And the first thing we have to do is go to our build.gradle file and add a few dependencies. And I've actually set up a project on GitHub. So you're more than welcome to go down in the description below and copy the link because inside that link, we are just going to be copying a few of the files that I have specified in the GitHub repository. And to get started, we have to go to app, build.gradle. And we're gonna get started by adding the compile options. So we're just gonna add that right under build types. Now we can go ahead and add the dependencies. We're just gonna copy this section down here. And I will explain very briefly what I'm using and why. So the first one we need is the preferences data store and that's gonna be the one we will be using for this tutorial. And I just copied the proto data store because I would like to experiment with it later, but you do not have to copy it in this tutorial. And then I copied a bunch of lifecycle components because you never know when you will need to use those. And the most important one you need for this video is the live data component, but you can go ahead and copy all of them if you feel like it. And then finally, of course, I added the Kotlin coroutine components, which will allow us to use coroutines in Android Studio and just make life a lot easier. So those were the dependencies that we'll be using for this project. I might not use half of them, but I still found it necessary to include them in case I wanted to change something. But uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and click on sync now and wait for the project to sync. Perfect. Then we can close our Gradle scripts folder and we can open the res folder because we have to go to our layout and click on activity underscore main XML. Then we can go to the split view and as you may have guessed it, we're just gonna to go to my GitHub repository and we're gonna click on app. Then we have to click on source. Then we're gonna click on main, res, layout, and we're gonna click on activity underscore main XML. Then we just have to go ahead and click on the raw button and we're just gonna copy everything inside here and paste it inside this XML layout. So you will have the exact same layout as I had for this sample project. And we're gonna go over it very, very briefly. So as you can see, we have three text views at the top. One is named TV underscore name, one is TV underscore age, and one is TV underscore gender. Then we have two edit texts. One is for the ET underscore name and one is for the age. And then finally we have a switch and a button and I named the switch switch underscore gender and the button was named button underscore save. And it's very straightforward. So you're more than welcome to explore it but the only thing you need to concentrate on here are the IDs of each of these elements. And after that, we can go to our main package where you will find our main activity class and we need to create a new class. So we're gonna type in Kotlin file class and we are going to name this one user manager class. And this user manager is going to take a context of type context, then we should import that. And right below, we're gonna create a private value named data store and that's going to equal the context 
dot create data store. And then we need to give it a name, which can be anything. It's just going to be the same thing as when we gave a name for our shared preferences, user underscore preferences. And that will take care of creating our data store. Then we should create some keys. So to do this, we're going to create a companion object. And inside this companion object, we're going to create the keys. So first one's going to be a value named user name and that's going to equal a preferences key of type string and then we need to give it the actual name which is going to be user underscore name then we have to do this two more times for the age and the gender so the second one is going to be user age key and this is going to change to user age and we need to change this to a type of int. Now we can do user gender. This is going to be a Boolean. And right here, we're going to type in user gender. Now we can clean that up and we can create our first suspend function down here. So the first thing we have to do is create a function that will store the data. So we're going to type in suspend function and it's going to say store user and it's going to take three arguments. So the first one is going to be an age of type int, a name of type string, and a boolean that says is male of type boolean. Then all we have to do in here is refer to our data store and call dot edit. Inside here, we can edit each of these keys to actually store the values. So the first one we want to edit is the username key. So we'll type in it, which will refer to the preferences we are editing. And inside here, we just have to enter our username key, and that is going to equal the name. Then we have to do the same thing for the other two. So it's user age key is going to equal the age. And finally, it's user gender key is going to equal the is male boolean. So that will take care of storing the data to the key we have assigned it. Now we need to create a few flows which will help us in retrieving the data. So the first one we want to create is a value called user name flow and that's going to be of type flow which will be of type string and we have to import the flow that comes from Kotlin coroutines and that is going to equal data store dot data and we just want to map it. And what we are going to map in here is it, which will refer to the preferences. And inside these brackets, we're gonna enter our username key. So it will get this. Otherwise, if this is null, we want to return an empty string. Then we need to create this same process for the other two values that we've created in this user manager. So the second one will be value user age flow. It's going to be of type flow, which will be of type int. And that's going to equal a data store dot data dot map. And inside we will do the exact same thing except with age. So user age key. And if that is null, we are going to return the value of zero. But uh, in addition to just writing this return statement, we are also allowed to add some logic in here. So for example, we can turn this into a value or so we're going to type value age and you just need to make sure that you return a value at the end of the block so we're just going to return age at the bottom and in between that we can actually add an if statement so we're going to type if age is less than 18 then we want to create a toast and that toast is going to take the context as the context the one that we added in our constructor and we're just going to write the user is under 18. So every time this is called and the age is under 18, it will make this toast for us. And that is just some nice additional logic that you can include in your flow blocks in case you want to do that. But of course, let's move on and create the final one, which will be user gender flow. And that's going to be a flow of type boolean, which is going to equal a data store dot data dot map. And inside here, we just need to return a user gender. So we're just going to refer to our user gender key. And if it is not null, we can return whatever values inside there. Otherwise, we will return false. And this will take care of everything we need to manage our key value pairs in our data store. So the next thing to do is actually to go to our main activity and add some functionality to our XML so we can actually call this code and use it. So the first thing we need to do at the top is create a late init var of type user manager and then three variables. So variable of name, which is going to be an empty string initially, and then a var of age, which will equal zero, and a var gender, which is going to equal 
an empty string as well. Then we can go ahead and instantiate our user manager. So that will just equal user manager and the context will be this main activity. Then let's create two new functions. One's gonna be the one that's called button save. So every time the user clicks on the button, it will save the data that we want to save. And then we also need to create a function that observes the data. So every time the data changes, we can actually update it. So let's get started by creating the observe data function. So we're gonna type in private function observe data. And inside here, the first thing we want to refer to is our user manager. And we are going to start with the username flow and we're going to use it as live data. Then all we have to do is call dot observe. The owner is gonna be this. And inside here, we can create a block. And every time something changes inside this username flow, it will be updated. And with that being said, let's type in the name is going to equal it. And then we can go ahead and refer to our TV underscore name dot text. And that's going to equal it to string. Then we need to do this two more times for the other two variables. So we're going to type in user manager dot user h flow, and that's going to be as live data dot observe the owner of this, and then create a block inside, set the age to it, and then we need to change the text view for the age dot text to it to string. And then finally, let's go ahead and get that boolean. So we're going to type in user manager dot user gender flow dot as live data dot observe with the owner referring to this and then create a block inside. But inside here, we are going to add a special expression which will help us determine the gender depending on, on whether it was true or it was false. So we're gonna type in if it is true, then we are going to set it to male, else we are going to set it to female. And then DTV underscore gender dot text is going to equal the gender. And this is going to take care of observing all the data we decide to change. Now, all we have to do, of course, is add the functionality for our button. So to do this, we're just going to create a new private function called button save. And inside this block of code, we are going to add a set on click listener and we need to retrieve the text from the edit text. So et underscore name dot text to string. Then we have to do the same thing for the age. So age is going to equal et underscore age dot text to string to int. Since we are certain it will always be an int. Then we need to type in value is male and that is going to equal the switch underscore gender. And if it is checked, it will be a male. Otherwise it will be a female. And this will return a Boolean as you can see. So all we have to do now is insert these values into our data store and that will update everything else accordingly. So as you may recall, we created a suspend function. So this has to be done in a coroutine scope. And to do this, we're just gonna call it global scope dot launch. And inside here, we can refer to our user manager and store the user with the age as the age, the name as the name, and whether it is a male or a female as the Boolean. And with that being said, let's go ahead and click on run and wait for our project to compile. So as you can see, the project has compiled successfully. We have nothing displaying at the moment besides the female and the zero. And we had a toast that said the age was under 18 at the bottom because we have not entered an age yet. So inside here, we can just go ahead and type in Luigi. We'll say he's 17 years old. Click on this, close that. And let's say Luigi is a male. And then let's go ahead and click on save user. And it will update all the values. Then of course we can add a female this time. We'll just say Francesca. And we will give her the age of 25. Then we can switch the switch to off and save the user. Now we have Francesca, age of 25. She's a female. And when we go ahead and rerun this app, the data should persist. So let's just go ahead and find the app, which will be data store. And I named this one preference data store, luckily. And as you can see, Francesca is still there. Also, if we decide to rotate the application, the data will persist. And yeah, that's actually everything I wanted to cover in this video about data store. Possibly in the near future, I might look into the proto data store but I just thought it was very essential that you guys learned about the basic data store so that we can actually start migrating away from shared preferences into data store because it's very simple to use, it's very efficient, and 
I can't really think of a reason not to use data store at the moment. But with that being said, if this video helped you, please leave a like and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.